You see how we're starting off the show today? Very demure, very mindful. You know, some of these other podcasts, they're very, very loud. They're in your ear. They're no. just, a, they do a little too much. No, not us. We are very mindful of your ears and your eyes. When you think of demure, the first thing you think of is me. <laughs> the second thing you think of is you. <laughs> okay. That's, uh, we had to hop on the trend. Uh, do you know about the demure trend? Do I? I was at a <laughs> wedding this weekend where if I heard... <laughs> That thing come out of one more person's phone <laughs> or been asked to be a part of one more TikTok. <laughs> I was going to be like, you know what? I'm going to get my AirPods. I'm going to listen strictly to reggaeton. <laughs> okay. I don't want to be a part of this anymore. <laughs> Although, shouts to the person who did that. I heard that they got enough money to yeah, have like a surgery they want. Jules LeBron, which uh, that, I, I don't know the, the birth name. <laughs> I don't know the background of the name. I'm sure that was... But that was the birth name. But that's my home girl. Yo, okay, she has, she has TikTok's new, uh, just just new home girl. Yeah, great. There's a, there's a lot of stars being made on this app. Exactly. And I can't okay. keep up. Not us. Not us. No. <laughs> but, but other people but, uh, <laughs> that on that app are becoming stars. So welcome to the Cooligans, everybody. Look who's back. Alexis Bloody. Guerreros has returned. I am so happy to be back. Oh, <laughs> you know, most places when you get, you know, when you get a ticket for a train, it's your responsibility to get there. Mm -hmm. If you don't get to the train on time before it leaves, you're done. Exactly. With an airplane ticket, it's a little different. You get texts. There's an app you need. There's emails. <laughs> there's there's boarding passes. There's a QR there's code. Passport that you mm -hmm. got to input. There's a lot of information. And sometimes you follow all that. Did you know on Air France, they even suggest what time you get to the airport? Okay. On very, the app, they give you a little kind. breakdown. Even if you get there before that, Porto says, I don't give a shit about any <laughs> of the things you just brought. Porto's airport, OPO, it should be. O O P S for oops. <laughs> oops. <laughs> how did we? <laughs> how is this considered a functional airport? Yeah, I don't think it is. <laughs> I they just don't want you to leave. Ryanair was the only airline that was moving. Everyone else was locked for two straight days. Was it a weather thing? No one knows. <laughs> they don't give you every person has a different answer. <laughs> one guy said the computer was down, but it's back up for the last 20 minutes. You're going to go. Next person says, we don't know how to turn the computers on. They've not been on for I a day. I thought they fixed. What was the... This the, wasn't a the, the Microsoft the, thing. The this cyber... Was, what was it called? One guy said the Wi-Fi went down. I said, y'all ain't got no <laughs> ethernet. <laughs> Yada, you're not lined directly into this internet. Damn, bro, they're still using. I can't, I can't trust. Porto's a beautiful city. Fly to Lisbon. Take the three-hour train. Okay. All right. Well. Oh my God. And then, and then, shouts to this one person at Delta who helped me figure out how to get home. But I called Delta, and look, I'm not one to brag, but I called the Diamond Medallion line. That's uh, okay. a direct that's a, line. That's a, that's a different number. You I, don't, you you don't, don't have, have access to that number. I don't call so. the gem pop number, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't doubt one 800 oops okay? <laughs> I call the Diamond Medallion number. And the lady, the first lady who helped me was very nice. Is Monday when I'm realizing, oh, I'm not going to make my flight. The only flight that gets me to New York all day yeah. from Porto. Lady says, I'm sorry, I can see if I can get you on another flight that'll get you to a different location. You'll have a connection, but then you'll get home. I said, go ahead. Puts me on hold 20 minutes. Comes back, goes, I found one. It leaves Thursday. <laughs> this is Monday. I'm not in some third world country. I'm not in, in Tiraspol. I'm not in some... Yeah, <laughs> third I'm world not, Turkey. No, Turkish no, Tiraspol's not... <laughs> Where's Tiraspol? Tiraspol's that uh, non-documented country uh, yeah, 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 with yeah, yeah. sheriff. You know what I mean? I'm not like yeah, it's yeah. a place that has plastic... <laughs> coins for currency i'm not in some random place you've never heard of right i'm in porto i'm in mainland europe in the eurozone mm. and the lady said thursday to me on monday damn bro so you bro. had you had to tell her now obrigado yeah, <laughs> yeah. how do i take back my obrigado <laughs> you know what i said to her i said ma'am i'm not even gonna ask to speak to your manager i want to speak to their boss I, there's no way i refuse to believe that thursday Ridiculous. I'm here. Today's Thursday, by Today's the way. Thursday. Made you made it. it. You made, made it in time, it, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> I didn't need that lady, bro. The next lady was sweetheart. She was like, I got you home in two days. Okay, lovely. <laughs> it, was, it was supposed to be the next day. <laughs> but there was also delays. There was a lot of problems. I like this guy here on the Titanic. <laughs> Yo, that ass? 
I honestly thought, what if I order an Uber? You think, they, <laughs> you think they'll figure this out? Unbelievable. You uh, remember Google Maps? You would do like from New York to driving directions from New York to London. It would say like, take a plane. Like, yeah, yeah. I thought maybe somehow Uber would be like, I got you. <laughs> they, they, they built that. A new bridge. <laughs> and who knows? I'll uh, drop off a couple Bifanias <laughs> and Francesinas. Welcome to the Cooligans, everybody. My name is Christian Polanco. That uh, is Alexis Guerreros, who finally made it home yes. uh, from his European trip. Hey, free night in uh paris look at that on daddy delta's credit card was huh? it free was it they covered the hotel and everything you love to see it okay delta shout low out key people at cbs thought i was making this up i took an extra day just to go to paris <laughs> low key uh people at cooligan's headquarters also thought you were making it <laughs> yeah <laughs> feel like all my bosses are uh, just distrusting but, right, me convenient how dare you distrust someone so demure <laughs> so, oh my oh no our so mindful our plane had to stop in ibiza i don't yeah. know what happened. I don't know, dude. <laughs> uh, the only place to stay was this phone party. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, what's up, everybody? The Cooligans here on Yahoo, Yahoo! Sports. Uh, Come on. Excited to be back. Um, <laughs> Good use of the button. <laughs> Just okay. to remind y'all. You know what I love about this country? The cap comes off the bottles. Oh, oh yeah. Because we, we, we can litter wherever we want. Bro, everybody. <laughs> we you stupid, you got this thing, you, you, it's up your nose. <laughs> There's too many safeguards to protect the environment. Yeah, y'all. You gotta trust Europe. your own people. <laughs> well, you don't. So what a kick and choke on it. <laughs> you learn a good lesson. You learn the Heimlich maneuver. Uh, so we got a lot to I go. I honestly think that's A lot to, obviously, the European leagues, uh, uh, uh kicked off uh we'll talk uh, we'll talk a little bit about that um leaks cut the finals coming up so we'll we'll recap uh those uh those semifinal matches right. uh and Leaks cup y'all remember that Leaks cup uh, bro okay. been watching? <laughs> i've been watching <laughs> I've been some numbers <laughs> <laughs> it's been the games have been somewhat entertaining yeah. i've been some of the games have been hot um and a, a couple other things to talk we'll, we'll get through a bunch of stuff all right we got to start uh with some dramatic news Actually, uh, did you hear pochettino I missed a lot. <laughs> That's, I like it. I haven't been here for a while. Yeah. But just, any quick thoughts huh? about uh, Pochettino to, uh, for USMNT? You happy little, about it? It's a little Spursy, but little, I'll take it. Okay. Okay. It is. I mean, it, it is dripping in Spursiness. I uh, like to think more of it. He's more of a PSG uh, Espanol <laughs> manager. Right. 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 He's just like he he washed that that Spurs stink. We've off seen of him. him before when we went to Messi's debut. That's right. Yeah. I mentioned that when uh, we were talking about. Oh, it. you guys talked about it. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to talk about? <laughs> uh, I want to talk about Fabrizio Romano because uh, Fabrizio, we all know, uh, is a is a is a a force in when it comes to the transfer market and and news. Uh, some people call him a journalist, but th that doesn't always sound like the no, exact. He's, he's more of an of a in the know influencer. I would I would call him an information broker. That's kind of what he's feels more of an aggregator from. He's the truth. He's, I mean, he doesn't he's break little, news very often, but it is the point of like this player got transferred. They're like, did he get it? Here we go. Yeah, it, he yeah, is yeah. The, the brand, crowning, yeah, the, the brand is, moment. is very strong with with Fabrizio. So um, he is uh, uh, someone who um, you know we've seen these these this, this role, especially I, I think the first time we started seeing it to a as Americans in like a very to a strong degree was Adam Schefter right in in the NFL as far as knowing when a player's being what about Woj wasn't there like a Woj bomb was that I think a Schefter thing? was before Woj maybe I could be wrong Schefter yeah before. Schefter was a big dog yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. The yeah so that's when it first started happening and then so obviously that was gonna happen and and again this sort of journalistic job has always sort of existed, but it's never been so centralized into like one particular person in world football where Fabrizio is, is talking about MLS deals. Uh, uh, it's crazy. Which is already like, people are like, oh my God, he yeah. knows that we exist. A little bit of that. Hey, but, remember but it, when he raided us on Twitch? I do remember that. It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> so it was crazy. We're like, how do you even know us? <laughs> so it was surreal. So, but um, he's, so he's getting a lot of flack and I think, Completely justified because well, this is this comes with why you brought up the journalism thing, right? Exactly, right. Um, because 
Fabrizio is now, a, a lot of people are, are highlighting the fact, and I sort of noticed it over the last year or so. Well, the world he lives in is very scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Right? You, don't get, you don't get tips for free, you know? <laughs> but, what, you know, not every tip is worth the, 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 the price. No, sometimes, <laughs> the, you know, sometimes you got to squeeze to get a little bit of juice, and this I, might not be worth. Exactly. So he's getting a lot of flack for uh, tweeting about Mason Greenwood mm. and, uh, and, Everything, anything, anytime Mason grew with when he was at uh, Hetafe, um, well, now he, he is at Marseille. But uh, ever since that transfer, he's he scored, I believe, one or two goals for, for Marseille. And Fabrizio Romano, who is, whose job is not particularly to talk about how well a player does. It's he just, almost never does that. His whole thing is about transfers. Exactly. So, uh, so if he's talking good about a player, it must be because something stellar happened. <laughs> but he just, uh, but Mason Greenwood scored a goal and Fabrizio tweeted about it. Of like, oh, another goal for Mason Greenwood. And it's just, it's a little bit of like, all right, well, why are you highlighting this young man and his successes when we know uh, what he is, what, what he has what he has done, what he has committed. Yeah, and again, His, there was audio. And there was audio. It's not, it, nothing is alleged. There was a. I mean, it, I think like the extent of the abuse we heard about is still technically alleged, mm -hmm. but we know something definitely happened. We saw his uh, his partner. Uh, uh, she had posted uh, photos of of injuries to her yeah. face mm -hmm. and and her, and her. I think arm or leg and then we heard the audio of him essentially trying to uh, coerce or forcefully. It was pressure, pressure her pre in yeah. sexual act, and it's. Unbelievably yeah, gross, yeah, it's horrific. I mean, horrific. Manchester United fans, the majority of them are like, like get him, off get the him team. on. We don't, we don't want him on our team. No, and it, it's it was bad enough that even a a, a club that where he was a highly ta uh, touted talent was like get him off the squad, mm -hmm. which is rare, rare in football because these are massive assets for these clubs. Exactly, and even Manchester United is like he doesn't fit. The ethos of the club. He doesn't fit the the the, the club they, and the standards. They even they had to have their arms twisted a little bit to be like, well, hey. yeah, at one point they were like, maybe we can bring him back, <laughs> and everyone was like, well, I think we remember why. Exactly. Yeah. And again, this isn't the type of character you want in your team. Now, I say all that to say this as well. I mean, I think he's still with that girl, and I think they have a kid now. Yeah, yeah. So I, I hope, in general, I you know I don't want to victim shame or anything at all, but I hope in general he has gotten some type of counseling and and is developed into a better person than he was than we saw uh because if you're going to be with someone and have a child with someone you at least want them to be feel safe so that i'll say that second of all why the hell is fabrizio romano why? talking about this guy <laughs> scoring a goal there's no I, reason for it so and that's the thing and, and that's what we're all trying to like sort of, sort of like rack our uh, brains he didn't do this with anyone else I, I can't specifically say he has no anyone else. I'm sure there there has to be some instance where he has done uh, uh, some positive publicity for. Not even just mention something that's not transfer related with a player. Yeah, it's it's pretty rare. I mean, we can go through his like Twitter feed and just uh, uh, like go through it real quick. But this in particular, now this it, it, it calls into question really like ethics and and values and and we know what more uh, what what Mason Greenwood is, is involved in what he was accused of what he, what we know happened and whether we won't know the exact specifics but the what we do know makes us feel really uncomfortable it's a little icky right and to the point where even when he was at Hitafe which some some Hitafe fans weren't super happy with, but he played well. And that's it, the frustrating it, part. Is it that seems to he is a good football exactly, and it seems to be like somewhat forgotten or or a little bit ignored. But in Marseille, I forgot who they played against in in uh, in their first match, but I know the fans were booing. Uh, uh, Greenwood every time he touched the ball, so not everybody uh, has forgotten. Yeah, no, not everyone has moved on. But which this is good. this um, you understand that there there might be positive publicity from the club from you know certain people you understand but when it's Fabricio himself doing it it's like all right okay and it's not it's not even about like yeah we i don't like it most people don't like it and it's, and it's uncomfortable but it then it was like well, okay well why are you doing it is it like are you being paid to do this are you being is it like hey uh, it's almost better if he is getting paid <laughs> at least we can not it's not just an amazing <laughs> ringwood stand it's just yeah. like, it's just Yo, like this, this my guy dude i had him in football manager years ago <laughs> and i feel a kinship with the guy so the the um dennis you start thinking about like okay is he being financially comp compensated for is he is it basically like oh an agent being like hey if you don't 
do this pos- positive publicity, then right. I may not help you down down the line with or some other I'm scoop. Gonna- I'm giving all the scoops to the There We Land kid. <laughs> the There We Land kid. You, you think I won't? <laughs> Man, I don't want... If the, if the There We Land kid starts tweeting about Mason Green, I'm oh like, there God. is no... <laughs> there is no... I hope you got no red hats. No red hats, kid. <laughs> just, I, don't, you know? I can't be a part of this anymore. Yeah. Um, starts tweeting out Justin Miram goals. <laughs> <laughs> Michigan Red Stars. <laughs> Bro, I, I did not think Justin Miller was going to come up in this segment, but I'm glad. Uh, this is, it's just, I mean, look, and even that. If, it's if, a light way of th- making. This is super inside baseball. So jokes. some people may not understand, like, know who Justin Miller may, may be necessarily. Obviously, MLS veteran played for, for a long time. Uh, for whatever reason, during the DNC, he's like, I'm going to tweet out my MAGA hat. Okay, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let everybody know who I support. Which side I stand on. Exactly. And let me remind you, this is an Iraqi American <laughs> who played for the Iraqi <laughs> national team and was afraid to go to camp because he didn't think he'd be let back in because of the Muslim man. But no, no, no. You, no, you, no, but Trump is my guy. No, but he sides <laughs> with the Trump. Dude. All right, whatever the guy who did the whole Muslim man doesn't go, make go, sense go, go, to go. us. I don't get it, but Merrim is getting lots of heat yeah. for doing hey, this. Free country, vote for whoever you want, post whatever you want. <laughs> but, but you're gonna piss off a lot of American <laughs> soccer really, fans, regardless of what side you pick. You upset somebody, <laughs> right? But it feels like American soccer fans in particular lead a little bit. More but if that. but if there's something to you're gonna upset every everybody. But if you are um if you if you're posting a MAGA hat, you know who you want to upset, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's you nothing do, you can't. Be purpose. like, why are you mad at me for? I'm just, yeah. it's like, nah, bro. We were, we all saw January 6th. We all get it. Yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. like, you understand why we're mad. And yeah. It's like, it also, do we need to list them? Because that's a long list. <laughs> the, weirder a part, the, the, tweet. the weirder part is Andrew Car- Carlton being in the comments, like, gang, 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 let's yeah. go. And it's like, bro. It's not that weird, actually. Speaking <laughs> of January 6th, he was, he went there. No, no, yeah. he went there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's a big, big fan. Yeah, uh, big fan. <laughs> so, no. So, this kind of uh, look, behavior um, uh, from, from, media like um, and look we all work in media and this is almost Isn't that crazy remember when we started the podcast i know right <laughs> <laughs> look look at the picture of us in my kitchen on the floor <laughs> and now we're in media <laughs> we, Ew, but, <laughs> but we we are at the the point in our careers yeah. and and our level in the, of, you know in this industry our sphere of influence where people will be like yo cooligans would be great if you just talked about this this thing for us. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. People will be like, hey, man, I was thinking you guys should come to a game. Get flown <laughs> out to a game. Oh, yeah, I'd love that. Hey, w- it'd be really cool if you would <laughs> really mention this one thing for us. And we're like, I had no idea you had ties to North Korea. This is crazy. <laughs> and that's kind of <laughs> that's where we're, we're like, we have some sense of like, hey, maybe we shouldn't work yeah, yeah, yeah. and do a favor for these folks because we Even don't really- we have some integrity is what you're saying. And it's like, if anybody was just like- And uh, I promised the fans I'd never have that, you know? <laughs> Which by the way, can I just mention, I know we're completely going off topic. I brought North Korea. Remember the joke I used to say on the show? Mm-hmm. We'll let anyone advertise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyone, any money. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter. We'll let anyone advertise. Even travel to NorthKorea.com. Guess what North Korea is doing? <laughs> Advertising on the cool again? Well, no, no, no. <laughs> They're opening to travel. Oh, okay. They're opening their borders. They have an entirely new city. <laughs> this might actually happen, dude. <laughs> Look at that. They're opening their borders to travel. They want to become a travel destination. Can you imagine that? Damn, bro. Summer in Pyongyang, <laughs> <Yo>. bro. <laughs> Son, <laughs> what's the fashion like in Pyongyang? <laughs> no, it's like a new city. It's like called like uh, I don't want to mispronounce it, but oh my god, dude! Imagine we actually get that as an advertiser. <laughs> I mean, I mean, we'll see if Yahoo is cool with it. Yeah, <laughs> that might be yeah, a yeah, little yeah, bit yeah. of an issue. Yeah, then we maybe we'll just throw it in an episode without them knowing. <laughs> um, okay, so look, man, this is a. Um, I feel like this is going to be a story that uh, is going to continue. I don't know what's sort of going to happen. It's, it, it's an interesting thing because I think Fabrizio um, operates under a, a little bit of a... He, he he doesn't need to sort of answer for most of this stuff. Like, nobody's going to hold his feet to the... He's too... It's almost like he's too useful to, to too many people that... Maybe that's why this kid is getting bumped up now. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. I mean, I, look, I, it's just... Look, I, all I'm thinking of, I'm trying to be, look, and for Bito, he follows us and, and whatever, like, yeah, we, we mean, know him. It's not, a, it's, it's just, there's a, there's a part of me that's just like, why, why take this risk? Why, why, why is this part of your sort of business strategy? Yeah, there has to be something important attached to this. Exactly. It can't just be like, 
oh, this is newsworthy. Yeah. Because, like, uh, realistically, nobody cares about Mason Greenwood and his success or failure in 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 football. Unless you're just, like, a, a diehard, you know... Marseille Man- fan or no, something. No, no, like, a United fan that, you know, hates that he's gone or whatever. Because he, he is, like, a homegrown yeah, from... Yeah, from yeah. Man- so I understand that a, a, a little bit. And, but... I, I just I don't I don't get the strategy here. I, it, it to me it's all, it's more negative than positive. But they, there must be something worthwhile for him on the other side of it. Yeah. Because uh, if not, then it's just strange to take the scrutiny. Because yeah. r- realistically, like if he is uh, a journalist or someone that covers the sport, then he shouldn't be the story. And that's why he's ma- he's making himself the story by yeah. making this decision. So it's kind of. So I, I think he even he would tell you he's not a journalist. By the way, just to follow up, it's called uh, Sam Sam Jiyun. Sam Jiyun. Sam Jiyun. North Korea. Sa- be- Sam. To be- is it J? Sam, Sam Jiyun. Yes. Yeah, Sam, Sam Jiyun. Jiyun. All right. And possibly beyond. But <laughs> well, we got to, can we, can we do a Cooligans episode from Sam Jiyun? Can, I mean, can we? Probably, I said probably no. <laughs> no, but why not? We can, we can. Do I'm, they have internet? <laughs> I think those are we're really- out here scolding Fabrizio about Macy <laughs> 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 like, it? What can we just like, think about it? <laughs> <laughs> Why? There must be some way that <laughs> Dude, we can we can financially the benefit. The people of Sam G who need this humor. <laughs> Watch our podcast numbers be <laughs> popping off from Yo. Sam G. Yo, um, his gracious leader listens. A dude. couple other uh, uh, quick things. Uh, Raheem Sterling. We talked about it on Monday with uh, with Cooper, but Raheem Sterling. It, it seems to be now. That he is, uh, he is out. He's I mean, out of Chelsea. Um, Enzo Maresca has said, like, I don't care if there's 40 players. I have my 20, 21. Mm-hmm. I don't care about the rest of them. I didn't think a player of Raheem Sterling's ilk would be of the other 20. You right. know what I mean? I thought he would be the main 20. But he's getting pushed out. And honestly, at this point, it's like, why hasn't, why haven't we heard any rumors this guy's too busy tweeting about Mason Greenwood. Could you, could you, could you, <laughs> well, could you imagine stuff. Raheem Sterling? Where's he going? <laughs> yeah, pretty surreal. I mean, um, it, it feels to a degree fairly disrespectful. And and I, I just what I didn't like is the the comments after the the first game uh, after they played City, where he was just like, "Oh, it was just a technical decision to leave Raheem Sterling off the roster." And it's like, okay, well, that's it's not just a technical decision. You're not just like worried how uh, uh, Ruben Diaz is gonna mark sterling or can he be him one you like yeah. you don't want him at this club and it's like they it, 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 i, I hate- mean that is still technical i mean he doesn't fit the profile of the play that enzo marisco wants and to some degree when you and you bring in the manager that's kind of that's, sure that's okay it just, I, also it just, the way the way it, Chelsea it feels, does business it feels weird only because sterling played in like every preseason match um, no sign, and, that, and I think that's his frustration that there was no sign yeah. that he wasn't uh, uh, going to be a part. Well, of. there recently has been a sign because they gave away his number, <laughs> <laughs> which is like you're looking for signs, kid. You hey, got one. Your locker ain't. <laughs> <laughs> your name's gone, bro. Yeah, uh, but Dave's yeah, they, they stri- your parking spot. Nah, <laughs> that's his player number forty eight on it now, my guy. But yeah, they stripped him of of his squad number and they gave it to uh, who, I, who was it that they gave it to? I think Pedro, Pedro Neto, maybe Joe Felix. Because uh, John Felix, yeah, uh, John Felix. Uh, uh, is uh, uh, announced going back to Chelsea. So, um, a, a, a bummer. The only the, the frustrating, and I mentioned this also on Monday, but uh, um, Raheem Sterling has like three years left on his deal because because they all signed because like they, year deals, <laughs> cause they yeah. all signed a ridiculous deal. So it's a it's a tough situation. They could buy him out. Maybe they could buy him out or someone else. Oh, here's the, I hate that rule of like, oh, you're gonna buy him. He's got three years left on his deal. As soon as you buy a player, you're gonna renegotiate the deal anyway. Uh, not always. They don't have to do that. Uh, the majority of the time they do. I mean, this is ridiculous. You're not just buying someone's actual contract. Well, yeah, that's what you actually are doing. Yes, but you're not <laughs> physically forced to maintain it. You're like you're not forced, hey, but the player can you be... agree to personal terms with the player right, before right, right. you agree with the right, yeah. team. The, so the like, player has to agree to even. Yeah, we're go. gonna bring you in. You're getting paid 125 a week. We'll pay 150. Suddenly the contract's different. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, we'll- Oh, Yeesh. that's right. Look at that. Who remember Trevor Chalaba, huh? <laughs> okay. And- also, did you see pictures of Todd Bowley leaving the stadium early? I did not. I think my guy's on a little Ozempic, by the way. He's looking <laughs> slim. <laughs> of all things that I thought you might say is like, what? pull up, pull okay. up, Todd Bowley leaving. My guy looks like a different. I mean, he looks like a like a soap opera guy. Uh, okay. I mean, look if he if he look lo- at the picture right there. This one. Okay, yo, look up. Look at the one above. Okay, oh, okay. now it's- look at this one. 
Who is this guy? He also looks like he has... Look at this jawline. <laughs> he looks like he has um, more hair. I don't know. I don't know. He just like looked younger Damn, for some reason. Bro. Right? He was scouting players in Turkey. <laughs> uh okay, good for maybe. That doesn't look like a completely different person. Not that completely, but he looks the good. Second chin maybe. is gone. Look how tiny his stomach is. This maybe, is maybe, maybe I'm, happy for you, I'm, bro. I'm gonna assume it's a it's a great diet and workout plan. Yeah, okay? me too. Yeah, that's what I, I assume <laughs> that as well. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you <laughs> know, when you do that, you get more hair and less than a second chin. <laughs> Whatever, uh, yo, you got money, bro. Good for you, bro. Good for you. Who's, who's the Latina in the background looking well confused, by the way. <laughs> who is this? Who is What's this? your cousin there? Who is this daddy? You know? Uh, <laughs> yeah, like, Damn, that's not the old Saboli. You can get me a nine year contract. I don't know. That. <laughs> She's just happy to be there. I don't know. She, but also, that looks like a 12 year old girl. I don't know who that Does is. Does it? I don't, I don't know. know. I she she could either be 35 or 12. Yeah, I can't I tell. I cannot tell. All right. But, uh, look, she's happy to be there. No, so. But Tom Bowley looking, looking spring chicken ish. Good for him. Hey. Good for him. Uh, so the uh, uh, and then the, okay the other thing uh, uh, before we move on to uh, some American soccer news uh, Ilka Gundogan leaving uh, Barcelona going back to Manchester City on a free on a free which is good because is ridiculous Manchester City doesn't have the money to pay for this <laughs> they, guy you know this traffic cash yeah, yeah, yeah I ain't got it bro damn what if, <laughs> forget all these I left my wallet somewhere is it under this pile of 115 <laughs> papers <laughs> okay my only chance ignore all those <laughs> beautiful trophies yeah. we ain't got money like nah, that nah dude forget that so we it, ain't got it, that money do what, we own 12 clubs <laughs> It's one of the things where Barcelona, we know that they're broke. We know they yeah, have yeah, yeah. tons of financial issues. Uh -huh. So t for it to get to the... If there was a pawn shop that accepted players, <laughs> I swear to God, that'd be whatever the worst neighborhood of Barcelona is. <laughs> good to one be standing behind the bulletproof shield. <laughs> this thing. is so... Uh, it, it seems... Uh, I mean, not only does it seem... Uh, uh, you know, ir reckless and irresponsible from a Barcelona's perspective on from a footballing perspective because it's not like they got tons of midfielders with the experience, no. uh, uh, with the type of career, uh, the, the quality of play of an Ilkay Gundogan. I understand there was probably some issues. Think of the difference. Real Madrid gets Mbappe for free. <laughs> <laughs> Barcelona gives up <laughs> Ilkay Gundogan for free. You're moving in different directions, man. I wonder if Barcelona it's looking like last year's Todd Bowley <laughs> <laughs> and Real Madrid looking like today's Todd Bowley. So, uh, whatever you got to do to look like Todd, Todd Bowley is the standard. You got to look like today's Todd Bowley. <laughs> okay, well, that's what we all trying to get if to. If you're out here moving like last year's Todd Bowley, <laughs> the pre Zempic Todd Bowley, <laughs> pre Zempic. Allegedly. Pre and post Zempic are the new. <laughs> yeah, dog. <laughs> I'm new. living in my pre Zempic era. <laughs> I refuse to go on that damn thing. Anyway, uh, it, it just seems um, Barcelona don't have a, 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 a unbelievably strong midfield. They are so fully in the mud. Yeah, it's, it's bad. It's crazy. It's bad. And it's just, uh, I don't know. mean, your mall's entire youth is being ruined <laughs> by Joao Laporte. I don't, I don't, yeah, that's the problem. They can't uh, register so it's players. It's a money issue, money issue. It's again. not just money. It's that they can't register the players until they get their their, yeah, their yeah, dollar yeah. amount low enough. They, they're in the red, dude. Ugh, gross. Ugh, Embarrassing. Man. Embarrassing. It feels, it's Couldn't like, be us, dude. <laughs> for a club of that <laughs> caliber. It's crazy. I have a suggestion, though. Jean Laporte wants to really get his money up. Mm -hmm. You may have to put the sponsorship either on like shorts or something because they have the front. Yeah. Right? Or maybe stadium name rights. Yo, North Korea is opening their borders. <laughs> okay. Now, yeah, I know so, I said this so, as a joke, so, but you clearly don't have the morals <laughs> to say no to it. Sammy <laughs> Yoon is going to be, <laughs> Yo. I swear. Yo, you know how Arsenal changed change their season by going to... Uh, uh, was it Doha? The where did they go? Qatar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's on their shirt now. They no, they didn't go to Abu Qatar. Dhabi. They went to Abu Dhabi. No, they went to Saudi Arabia. I thought, think it might have been Saudi Arabia. I mean, Dubai. It was Dubai. The, Dubai. Yeah. They went to Dubai and changed their season around. Think of everything that happened. <laughs> think of the changes that happen when you go to San Yun. <laughs> just gonna be just, just fourteen players held hostage. Yeah, hundred percent. <laughs> Not allowed to leave. Why is everyone so thin? <laughs> And starving. <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm joking. Yeah, it yeah, could yeah. be beautiful. We're just trying to so resolve these financial <laughs> yeah, woes. Yeah, yeah. I'm just suggesting this. 
<laughs> we will figure it out. It's yes. just it, unbelievable. That. Think of the torture. I mean, training camp <laughs> that you can have. But the, it's just, it's so crazy because, again, the, the, it's just, it's not even about. Maybe uh, that's where Todd Bowley went. <laughs> <laughs> just a quick. <laughs> it's just a, he went to a health spa <laughs> in San Mateo, North Korea. But Korean. just the, the, the level of, of, again, popularity and just the brand. It's just like the, the fact that a club, a business like this can be mismanaged. It's all, Barcelona is arguably too big to fail, right? You oh, can't. You end running them. You can't. They they shouldn't be like they can't I be misrun agree. like this. But then it's like, but but the, the the club is so popular, brings in so much money that 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 occasionally from time to time, the people who are running the front office is like, ah, yeah, let's get, mm, let's try to look at get, all this money, but none of it's in my pocket. <laughs> let's see how much we can get out of this and yeah. stuff. And and now we are at at, at this point, especially yeah, also given. The, the inflated value of, of players and trans, these transfer fees and agents fees, like they just haven't been able to to sort of uh, uh, um, sort of stay afloat and keep up with with like uh, uh, who was it uh, Florent uh, Florentino Perez, uh, who is like we all sort of see him as like this t t almost mafioso type right. of guy, but he's just like nah, bro, you you agents, you're not you're not fleecing me. Like he, he's the, waiting for Mbappe, constantly having those conversations. I forgot who it was, but there was a player who was injured. I think they might have ended up on Real Madrid. I can't remember who it was. It was a player for another team. He ended up injured, bad injury, like out for the season. Florentino Perez dropped off a note. He said, best of luck with your recovery because I think you are the quality of a Real Madrid player. Which gave that player mm. the inspiration to go out and get healthy, so that he can go on Real Madrid, go to Real Madrid on a free. Think of the mind games <laughs> this guy's playing. My man is playing chess, bro. <laughs> John Laporte's like, do you have any money in your pocket before you leave? Here? Laporte is playing hungry, hungry hippos, bro. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's like, ah! <laughs> yeah. not good enough, not dog. good, bro. <laughs> All right, uh, we got to talk uh, some uh, some leaks up, some and, and some NWSL because they got a new CBA uh, and yes. uh, a, a lot of uh, fascinating stuff going on in American soccer. Let's get to it. This Sunday, mm. uh, our our dear friend, our homie. Okay, Wait one one of our close personal friends is having they're retiring her jersey. Oh my god. <laughs> it's about time. It is about time cuz Megan Rapino is getting her jersey retired by the Seattle Rain. Look at these beautiful kids by the way. Thank yeah, shout out Seattle shout Rain. out to the Rain. They yeah, they they uh, sent these to us. Um but th this is a, a a dope thing. Not only look you know, we we're, we're uh, Rapino stands. Uh, everybody knows yeah. that. I mean, we're gonna like, get some co the, the comments. Leave the comments you want to leave. Who yeah. cares? But like, uh, Megan Rapino is an American hero. Always she's uh, an celebrate absolute her, superstar okay? and a winner, a World Cup winner. Exactly. Um, she's absolutely incredible. Just uh, one of my favorite people that I've ever gotten to meet mm -hmm. as a as a as a circumstance of this show. Uh, I've gotten a party her with her. She's a wonderful personality. Exactly. And I'm like, please don't pick up a microphone because it's going to make our jobs harder. <laughs> and she People did. How dare she hurt? Right? And it's her like, and her wife. Like you're not even listening to us. How could we possibly be friends? <laughs> we gave you great advice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why don't you just listen to it? <laughs> okay. um, but absolutely incredible. Also, just a storied career. I mean, pull up the uh, the, the facts they sent us because I, I didn't realize one of the... Um, the email. That oh, yeah, got. yeah. Okay. I'm not going to show it on screen. No, not on screen. No. <laughs> Good God, no. But I didn't realize that she had played, was it, 13 straight years or 10 straight years at her club. 2013 to 2023. She yeah. She played every season at the rain. That's a beautiful thing, especially in a league like NWSO. That sure. doesn't always get to happen. Sure. Absolutely incredible. I mean, obviously... In, insane amount of goals scored, insane amount of assists. Just absolutely an essential player in w NWSL on the women's national team. You know, we talk a lot about, you mentioned how you kind of fell in love with football when, uh, what was his name? Landon Donovan scored the goal against Algeria. Sure, sure. That was like one of the higher, dude, for so many people, especially a lot of young women in this country, May Rapino is that, is that what got them into the 100%. Sport. So they're, they're, this Sunday, um, uh, they're having their, their retirement, they're retiring her jersey. Uh -huh. uh, NWSL is returning this weekend. Uh, but the, the cool thing is um, that the, the Rain are doing a contest, essentially. Uh, so you can win uh, merch or pitch side seats as a bunch of other prizes. Uh, but all you got to do is take a photo doing your Megan Rapino celebration. The Rise celebration. Which yeah, yeah. We all know. We, we, she 
made famous. We've all done. We we did this with her, I believe, in Charlotte. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is crazy. Mm -hmm. So it's obviously the Rise cam campaign. If you notice, the I and the S is a fifteen for her number, which is pretty cool. Um, they're gonna have twelve members of the nineteen eighty fivers, the first fielded women's national team, of which five and the coach were all from Washington. They're all gonna be there to celebrate with her and obviously her massive impact on the game and equality, etc. Um, in fact, if you want, you do this, do this celebration, mm -hmm. uh, and put hashtag Rise for Pino. Mm. Um, and look, you can enter now if you go to the link on the bio on the the Rain FC. Am I doing it yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of there. <laughs> We're because it's. A, I'm not even in. Camera. This is this is the Bellingham. Yeah, this the, is but Bellingham. The one we got to put one arm down a little tilt bit. Tilt that joint a little bit. <laughs> you just the Rapino tilt and boom. Shouts to Bellingham for paying homage to the wonderful. <laughs> exactly. That's why he's. That's why he got the celebration. But from. it's a real like ta da! You know, it's before you do this part. <laughs> that's incredible man they're really putting on for her if you're in seattle go to the game go dude. to the game uh and yeah make sure you use there's actually going to be a bunch of the a bunch of the people are going to get a chance oh and encourage folks to do this if they want because they're gonna they might get picked to go uh which we call it uh pitch side like Look you at mentioned that. hey you can party with rapino next time <laughs> bro you know we're going to the club with go to the club <laughs> that might be one of the prizes Hell Who yeah, knows? Dude. and you know what somebody if you tag us in it one special winner will win a trip to sammy you <laughs> Sammy Yoon <laughs> is uh, is where it's at right now. Rapino, it's the new Ibiza. <laughs> Rapino loves loves it. She goes there. Yeah, yeah no, please God no. <laughs> All right. Um, another uh, another. Uh, speaking of retirement, <laughs> uh -huh. I just want to mention. Give a shout out to Dax McCarty. Yes, who is a retired three years ago. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, he's on the pitch. I, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> they still let him run out every once in a while. Uh, no, uh, Dax McCarty has announced that he is retiring from uh, professional soccer he's 37 man he's just not that old no not that old but it's but he's been around for a minute damn but know? he must look at kai kamara and be like what the hell are you Yo, doing stop bro? you're making us look bad <laughs> you, are you doing those mp what <laughs> yeah, are you doing yeah. <laughs> what's going on you're looking post mp right <laughs> now because he, he he posted uh, a video announcing his retirement and he said that um he he knew that uh, i'm paraphrasing i don't remember exactly what he said but he basically said i knew i had to retire when my wife said that i was getting love handles uh, Damn. <laughs> which we know uh, his wife, Jen, yeah, who's funny, uh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, she's a, a friend of the show as well. Um, but but and, and, and knowing her, that's not a shock. No, that's she, that, that she is, said that. <laughs> she 100% said that. She said it loud in the bass. <laughs> she, made, she made sure the kids heard. Yeah, okay? <laughs> she did it in front of his family. <laughs> So, uh, not a shock, but no, that, that is a, uh, a, 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 you know, we have a history with Dax and, the, and yeah. the, the, the way we were initially, uh, uh, you know, introduced to Dax was him scoring two goals, uh, against NYCFC yeah. in the, in the red wedding, the seven nil game. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then we made ourselves a part of his, uh, life. Yes. He got traded from, uh, from New York Red Bulls. Well, he had a, on his wedding day, on his wedding day, out. he found that, uh, or like very right close to his wedding day. Yeah. But, um, I think they waited to, you know, after you kissed the bride. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, if anyone has anything to say, speak now. Forever hold your peace. The GM stands up. Glad, I'm glad you all could be here. He's uh, already like, oh my god, if Fabrizio, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, so yeah, so that's uh, how we, we so we got introduced to him because we we sent, went through his registry. We, we found his registry. We were talking about this, so we made a whole like little mini documentary yeah. about this. We couldn't afford anything, so we found the cheapest thing because the first thing you found. Was a lamp for three hundred bucks. Right. I'm like, bro, it's a bit. We don't know you like that. So we bought him one of what ended up being a large set of fruit bowls. Yes, uh, we just bought him a one, and uh, <laughs> we bought him one fruit bowl. I think it was like sixteen bucks, but the shipping was like thirty bucks. It was something crazy like uh -huh. that. We couldn't afford it. Put it on my credit card. I don't think I ever expensed that through Cooligans, by the way. <laughs> well, I got you, bro. <laughs> yeah, Eight years later. that my way. Um, and it, lo and behold, it became a whole thing. But you kept asking, why are people mentioning? Like, they, the, his wife would put up photos mm -hmm. and be like, send the Cooligans a thank you. <laughs> but I think she thought it was because she hadn't sent out thank you cards for the wedding yet. Yeah. I, uh, to it my knowledge, to my knowledge, they have not sent out wedding uh, uh, thank, you. thank you cards. For well, the, now you know what you're gonna do with your retirement, buddy. <laughs> Day one, um, but uh, no. So we set them fruit bowl, and then we uh, we we went to the uh, MLS All Star Game in 2018 to Chicago and got 
like got closure. Dax actually told us thank you for the fruit bowl. Yes. There's a whole, if you look up Dax fruit bowl on YouTube, you will find uh, the the little mini doc that we made about it, our whole journey in, in getting closure about this fruit bowl. But that was a lot. Uh, no, without a doubt, Dax has been someone that we initial, initially were like, was like, now, I don't like this guy because he he hurts my team. He also enjoys beating a rival wherever he Without is. Without a doubt. There's a, there he takes real pleasure yeah. in, in hurting. And when that's your favorite team, <laughs> you're just like, ouch. So there was a, but there was when we started uh chatting with uh with Dax and getting to know him, uh he is he is one of the uh, most like uh, uh, genuine kind of um, uh, kind of American athletes and like a real ambassador for Major League Soccer and like what what American soccer can be for a lot of people in this country and stuff like that. Like he he's a good representative of that. Like he just he spent his whole career here. He, yeah. he he's just a like had a, opportunities it, with the men's national team as well through yeah, his playing MLS. Yeah, he's won a Gold Cup I think once or twice. Yeah. Like no, the dude is is a is a a soldier of mm-hmm. of American soccer and uh, getting to know him. I know his future is obviously very bright when it comes to working in in media. He does, uh, MLS Journeyman is the podcast that they do now, uh, and he's just a, a great personality and also really really funny. Um, so yeah, I mean you know, congrats on an incredible career. He has obviously a few more games left with uh, Atlanta United. Maybe they uh, make it to the playoffs. Maybe they get a little further. Who knows? Um, he the, the the trophy that's always eluded him has been MLS Cup. Um, you know, obviously don't hope he wins it this year, yeah, but. Yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry, Dax, but anything can happen. If um, my team don't have a chance, then maybe I'll root for you. <laughs> so, uh, so we'll see, man. But no, no, like I, I just wanted to make sure we said that because he, like, legit, he's uh, he's always been really, really cool to us as well. Yeah, he's uh, been a guest on the show many times. Yeah, yeah, great, yeah. great dude. All right, um, from not knowing who we were to. To Take a guest on the show. It's to, crazy. To, and getting a, a, a fruit bowl from us. All right. Uh, Leagues Cup. You're welcome. Uh, the Leagues Cup uh, semifinals uh, happened uh, yesterday, yeah. Wednesday. Um, Columbus uh, took, took you know, took control very easily, I think, of Philadelphia and the LAFC. Philly had moments, but yeah. I mean, Columbus are just one hell of a team. Diego Rossi. Rossi, what a player, Cucho. Man. I mean, it's just, it's, I mean, look, NYCFC, you know, obviously they got uh, knocked out by Columbus in, in penalties, which was like, they Gut had. Got wrenching, man. Took them. Took yeah. Them to yeah. The wire. It's just like, I, I still, I'm like, Santi missing that penalty. Yeah, it's crazy. It's just like, it, it's one of those things where as soon as he went up, I'm like, Oh, okay, We're, this is gonna go on to another yeah. round. Like we got this, and no, our best player, <laughs> our best player, yeah. uh, and uh, and our designated penalty taker. And so it was just very, very shocking for, for him to miss that penalty. But Columbus are, you know, I, I think if NYCFC wins on penalties, you still say like, oh wow, like they beat them at home, and yeah, like that, that would have been huge. That would have been a huge deal because Columbus, I think, has only lost two games mm-hmm. um, uh, at uh, what's uh, what's lower, it? lower lower dot com field, um, but. This, uh, I saw Jim Curtin was also giving a lot of praise to Columbus and just basically he did a little bit of the like, um, the, the, he was highlighting like their players and like, you know, the, the how they recruit and, and mentioning, mentioning Gucho and saying like, oh, if you have a guy like that, you have like two, three guys like that, like you just, you're going to kill a lot of teams. But it was a little bit of like, Man, it'd be nice if yeah, yeah, our yeah. team would spend a little bit of money to have a couple guys like that. It's like if your girl's <laughs> like, wow, so, you know, Stella was telling me about her husband, Steve. He takes out the garbage every <laughs> Every week on time, you know, like, I feel like this got nothing to do with Steve. I feel like, a lot more to do with me. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so uh, Philadelphia is obviously playing in the third place game against Colorado. Colorado, who got, who got mollywhopped by LAFC? I mean, and so we got a we got a rematch of the the MLS Cup final. Dude, recently both of these coaches have been mentioning have been mentioned in the short list of names for. Men's national team coach, Will mm-hmm. Nancy's name come up. Chirundolo. Came up. Chirundolo definitely came up. I and mean, we're talking about these are the are these the two biggest clubs in MLS right now? Um you some fans would say LA Galaxy are still there based on league play and playoffs and, and championships. No, I mean, bi- over the last my- two to two to three years. These are by far the two biggest. Yeah, yeah. Clubs. I mean, as, uh, teams that don't include Lionel Messi. Yes, these are the the two uh, yeah, of biggest. Course. Um, but the because and and it, it just, Miami doesn't even include Lionel Messi right now. <laughs> <laughs> but you, when you think about um, the, I think these clubs represent a a like taking advantage of every sort of um, 
you know, salary increase, like, uh, you know, as far as like how much they can spend on playoff, uh, on, on, on rosters, mm -hmm. uh, um, every sort little change of like, how do we get the leg up on, uh, on, on you know, to be as dominant yeah. in this league? And it's like both of these clubs took advantage of that. They have the, the signings are always perfect. I mean, leave Diego Rossi, who played on LAFC and, and went to Turkey and then came back uh, yeah. uh, uh, to Columbus. Just the there's a sort of feeling of like these these clubs are starting to feel representative of like now more European clubs or, or more players that play in Europe or even players that play in South America. Like, yeah, you know, L.A. sounds much more attractive than Columbus, Ohio. But if I can go to Columbus, Ohio and develop my career, play on a strong team, well, play with good players. I know this is going to upset people, but we've been to Manchester. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's a fun city. Manchester is fun. But there's nothing about Manchester that's that, like, that's where I want to play. A city I, I want to live. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is where I want to go. L.A., I would love to be a footballer in L.A. I'd love to be a footballer in New York. I'd love to be a footballer in Miami. I'd love to be a footballer in, you know, in Barcelona. Yeah, because of the city. Yeah. Manchester is an example where it's not, the city itself isn't the draw. Not that it's a deterrent unless you're, you know, Angel Di Maria's wife. It's not, the city itself isn't a deterrent. <laughs> hate, but hate that place. Yes, yeah, she really despises <laughs> it. Uh, but if you are, if you are a player and you want to have a good career, Manchester offers two teams where you can essentially find glory, right? Of course. Columbus is somewhat becoming that in the U.S., where it's not the city that would first pop up if you're somebody from yeah. outside the States and go, oh, I, I've always wanted to live in Columbus. Oh, that's probably not going to happen, right? But, you know, Columbus, Columbus Crew and Wilfred Nazi have created this team where, like, Yo, we're going to be competing year in and year out. Yeah, yeah. I, they I, kind of have made themselves a place where, like, if I'm a player and I'm going into into MLS, yes, maybe if I'm at the age where, like, maybe it's a little bit over and I kind of want to ride out the last few years in the style, LA for sure. Sure, yeah. But you can pick one of the two teams. And I, I would argue but Columbus is a place where, like, if I want to win trophies... I have a really good shot there. Sure. I'm, I'm sure uh, Kucha was like, yo, where's the Colombian? Where's yeah. little Colombia? I, yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> in Columbus. Wow. <laughs> <Bicero's>. <laughs> what? Don't see anybody. We'll, we'll figure it out later. The white people move over real quick. I'm just trying to see if maybe they're behind you. <laughs> okay. You've seen a lot of big, big core fed dudes, bro. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So the final, obviously, like I said, a rematch of the, of the um, MLS Cup final. But this is... This is the, I will say, look, ratings have been down what they said, 78 percent. Uh, I mean, but Lionel Messi okay, was there yes. last year. Yeah, I mean, yeah, let's yeah. not be <laughs> sure. <laughs> I know they're talking about how like the interest isn't where it was before. Right. Sure. I get that. But this final, this is a spicy final. It is a spicy final, but it, it's also, you know, there there's also even uh, MLS and Liga MX, but, you know, both sides are like. Damn, why is there no Liga MX team in here? Like this is well, because of the way they play, which is yeah. <laughs> which is that's kind of the the shock that there's no um, Liga MX team that even uh, made it to the semifinals. Um, it, it, is it is it suggesting that you know that gap is closer, or is it still they're not taking they're not, it serious? They're not either. They're not taking it seriously, or is it can we really compare since they're not playing their games uh, in Mexico? I mean, look. If you ask the fans and the players, they'd probably want those games played in Mexico, mm -hmm. right? At least their home games. If you ask the front office, they're like, no, exactly, I think we're yeah. good here. It's just, it, I, I think League's Cup is never going to give us the answer of like, which league is better. Because because of it's it's not uh, equal and it's not fair because they're not. I also don't think that's the point of it. I, I mean, mean, it's called League's Cup, and they're like you're the best against MLS and against uh, uh, against the best in Mexico and blah blah. And that is how it's marketed. But there's no way we can ever really get that answer. I don't think it's marketed that way. It's marketed as like, hey, Mexicans who don't care about MLS, <laughs> will you at least watch if we're playing one of your favorite teams? <laughs> we need we need to put music <laughs> over that, like under that, so that you. That'll be the, that's yeah. the promo. That should that's be the, the promo. Cup for promo. This. <laughs> Are you a fan of Club America? <laughs> well, fine. Will you watch Colorado Rapids <laughs> if they're playing Club America? <laughs> oh, you will. Will you? <laughs> oh, wow. What if Messi's involved? <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, so whatever. I, look, I, and uh, you know, we were talking about this before, but like, I'm I'm trying to enjoy it as much as I can. Uh, I, I I get because of the U.S. Open Cup. I get why supporters have. You know, steadfastly wanted to stay sure, away from sure. it. I'm all for that. I'm I'm in agreement. You, that's the only voice you have is to not yeah, show yeah, up and not the, I'm, money. I'm in favor. So of go that. ahead and do that. 
But this final is the one game where I'm like, all right, I'm kind of interested. This is this, this going to be a good game. I mean, you're, you're literally seeing uh, MLS's two best teams uh, uh, play against each other. Yeah. I, I, it's and yo, all- can, can Chirundolo figure it out where he couldn't last year in the final? Yeah, yeah. So this is going to be, this also might be the MLS Cup final again for all yeah. we know. Who Will knows? Giroud score? Uh, yeah. No, not with Kai Kamara there. Yeah, bro. Is Kai Kamara drinking, you know, blood in the <laughs> locker room to stay so young? <laughs> okay. yeah. This is, uh, yeah, I, we, that's another we can spend a whole bunch of time talking about Kai Kamara. I just like, I, I think he, he's ageless wonder. Fitting in unbelievably well at, at LAFC. So, uh, uh, so shouts to them. Okay. Uh, we got a couple other things to cover. Uh, so we'll be right back after this. NWSL and the NWSLPA have announced a new CBA. They have a new collective huge. bargaining agreement. They had a new one. They had one fairly recently, maybe like a little less than two years ago. Right, because it was almost a work stoppage. Correct. Uh, and th- and there was no, uh, there was never a CBA in place before that. Right. So that was a, a huge deal, monumental thing for, uh, for NWSL and women's soccer uh, here in America. And now this CBA is... I think it's going to change robust the, <laughs> the, the the sports landscape, I think, for women's and even men's sports, because here are some of the uh, main points and main, I think, wins for the players. Uh, one of them, they eliminate the draft, the college draft, all drafts. So it's, it, it, it sounds like even expansion draft. Yeah, it says all drafts. So, yeah, what is it? Um, what's the not expansion draft, but there's also like uh, the uh, ed- re- ed- re- ed- re-entry draft. Re-entry draft. Yeah, so the, the college draft, uh, uh, expansion draft, um, re-entry draft. Um, every con- all this before MLS. I know <laughs> this is important. The play, even the, yeah, the players have to uh, fight for something like this. I mean, and this also in American sports, this is not. This is more the European model, yeah, and not not the American model. So, but I think we all see this as a positive for the survival of the women's game. But you mentioned, um, and I'm sorry, in growth, of yes, the women's yes. Game. So uh, every contract will be a guaranteed contract. That's huge. That is, that is huge. Which is there's a little bit of like it wasn't already guaranteed. Yeah. That's no, kind of crazy. Like, damn, you injured. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that money we promised you <laughs> for for uh, players who you know you know realistically make uh, some players make very little right. for the c- contract to not be guaranteed is kind of uh, uh, kind of wild right um, and we've heard this about players getting injured and then f- trying to figure out how do I keep my health benefits how do I exactly yeah. um, so the, and then some of the other ones free agency f- uh, for also before it used to be like you had to be a certain age right. had to play a certain amount of years in the league and or whatever now now it's more like uh, the European model yeah. where like if you're out of contract you're out of contract then you don't have to worry about anything. And mind you, MLS, I think, still has a structure where you have to play for the same team for so many years in exactly. a row. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Um, no, no trades without player consent. This is tremendous. This is huge. Because this has been, a uh, the last couple of years, been a huge talking point because you see the 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 sadness and the heartbreak of of players that love their teams want to be there want to help them win or have a second job in that city or yeah a lot of them found a sponsor family that you know takes them in that they live with Mm -hmm. that they have a a close connection with or something where that moves i'm not as big a fan of this because it to me it seems like something I've never seen before. So this feels so new. Mm-hmm. Where I'm like, I wonder if there's an advantage that can be had here by by the clubs, by the clubs, or by even maybe by a player who can hold the club hostage. And that's me saying like, there's a five percent doubt there. Ninety five percent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this seems like a great that, move because I see the same thing you see, which is where a player gets completely uprooted and maybe gets traded to a team where they were only going to use them for like whatever the financial benefit of having this player on there yeah. and not necessarily part of their plans and now your career is upended. Yeah. So this I'm excited for. And people, for. I think um, they have probably less sympathy for something like this, especially when it comes to like, uh, I remember hearing, I think Paul George talk about this, about being by basically saying like, I won't come to the I guess maybe the Clippers or something if there isn't a no trade clause. And he didn't want to he didn't want to resign uh, with the Clippers unless they guaranteed that he he they, they had that no trade clause. Right. But people, uh, for the most part, are like. Bro, you're getting paid millions. Like, who cares if you have to move away or whatever? But even though, even for those millionaires, they may have children in school. They might yeah, have, yeah. The, you know, there's reasons Family why. Family reasons why. And for But, but for, for NWSL players, players well. if you're making $45,000 that year mm-hmm. and, and you also have to leave, maybe you have 
a lease that you can't maybe it might right. be hard to get out of or whatever. Like it, it's it's real people it's problems real, <laughs> at this league. Man. It's very relatable problem. Yeah. So this is why the no trades without the player no, consent. I'm like, okay, this is a, a, a good thing for the players at this moment. Right. Uh, and uh, I'm sure uh, we haven't seen all the stipulations. So those little bit of doubts that I have about this, sure. not all of a sudden just being a completely kumbaya moment for this one stipulation might be completely dispelled when we read the full document. Uh, Christian reads the full document and tells me what it says. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> free agency for all. Yes. Huge. I went to, uh, yeah, which I mentioned already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the uh, new workload management standards, which is, um, again, it's it's one of those things where, like, they weren't, they weren't standards. Uh, how, far, yeah, yeah. How, how far are you able to push to these players? Right. <laughs> uh, and then the other one, uh, minimum salary to nearly double by 2030. Um, which we haven't been told what it is. Right, they uh, don't tell you what the minimum salary. is. I don't right? know what it currently is. I would have to. Uh, we would have to look through the actual like document. Um, but whatever that number is, doubling is a positive for the for the players that will be stuck in that salary. We've seen so many players retire because it's just not financially viable for them to yeah. continue to develop. But these are players that can turn into some incredible players at the end of their career or in the next year or two. I mean, so many young players. This completely opens the door for them to at least have a bit more financial freedom. Or even if the minimum salary. That's a, that's a good salary to be a footballer. <laughs> I would argue it is not. No, no. Inflation by the time we hit 2030, 82,000 is going to feel like. 2030? 2030, not oh, now. Yeah, no, that's not great. <laughs> that's not great. I mean, it's. Which is fine because a studio apartment in Sheboygan, Wisconsin will be $10,000 a month. <laughs> Just, so you just got to figure out where to live two months out of the year. It's not bad. Yo, visit, visit Sheboygan. <laughs> Yo. Uh, but get that on a, on a shirt. <laughs> Boy, it's Bar almost so, as good as Sam <laughs> Hughes. So, um, no, so it's not great, but it's better. That's yeah. all. That's really all it is. I didn't realize he said 2030, but that's kind of crazy, actually. <laughs> 2030. Um, yeah, so this is what you have to have. Nah, man, we got to start paying these players more, bro. <laughs> we need to go back to the negotiations. Like, thing. look, the, uh, look, not every player gets to pay that little. No, but, but that's the, the minimum. That's a uh, someone at the end of the bench. But that's the thing. It, at the end of the bench, but th there should be a, just like in MLS, there's those players that are on the edge of the bench that, that are going to be um, maybe in MLS for seven, eight years. Mm -hmm. Like, th it should be a viable job where you yeah. can just like, by the end of it, you're not like in debt or something. Like, it should yeah. be. We're not that far removed from the era where players, big names. Mm hmm would retire and they'd be like, hey, their announcement for retiring was also announcing their new job. It's like, <laughs> do you need an auto loan? You know? <laughs> Real estate, Chipotle, right, everything. Financial <laughs> advisors. It's a, it's a, and it's sometimes, they would make more money doing that yeah. than, than staying in the league. So that, that it can't be a thing where if you have that talent, um, that you that you're being that the competition is not just other clubs that are vying for your services. It's right. not it's not where like the Vry is saying like you gotta come back. You know yeah, yeah. you're gonna get Look, there's a real opportunity. Finish your certifications. <laughs> you can't. That should we not. We got some be. MLS player who's like, do I gotta do OnlyFans just to make this? Pop? I think you, know I, mean? you think Garvey's gonna be cool yeah. with it? I don't <laughs> you think know. He's gonna be upset. <laughs> as long as I don't use the stadium, I think we're good. Donnie, I blurred my. face. I didn't think they would know. I blurred everything but the feet, Don. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. So like, uh, so this is a, a huge uh, a step forward um, uh, for uh, NWSL. What do you and think is the biggest, the biggest difference maker of the list that we saw? Um, free agency. Free, I think free agency. The guarantee contract. I think free agency. And um, so I think what's going to happen, especially now that the free agency and there's no draft. To me, the draft is the biggest one. The, yeah, I think so too, because now. Because I got a hot take. Uh, so my my take, before you give your hot take. Hold on. It, it might be similar, but uh, you're going to see some NWSL super teams. You're going to see similar to Chelsea, similar to, uh, you know, Arsenal uh, uh, in, in the WSL. You're going to see teams that are stacked and they're going to have to figure out ways to find some kind of parity. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you might have got, I mean, Gotham, you know, some people calling kind of a, like, kind of a there super team. There's a that goes a little bit, right? right, right? The, the table doesn't sort of reflect that. But, not yet, not yet, not yet. But the you're going to start what's, I think it's going to happen. You're going to see very, very strong teams. The 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 brand and the 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 notoriety of those teams is going to help the league grow. And there's going to teams that are going to be brutal. The teams are going to be suffer from this. But I think it's it's going to be like a rising tide lifts all boats. Are you saying that if you have the ambition 
that you will be you will benefit from it. I think so. Well, then that leads me to my hot take. This begins the process for NWSL to have promotion and relegation. Ooh. Now, hear me out. <laughs> you said there's going to be some super teams, some teams that are going to rise to the top, and the bottom is going to be brutal. What do you think should happen to those brutal teams? <laughs> they get to, well, I don't know, I guess they're going to be watching NWSL on TV. Right? You don't get to pick where you go, which is down a level. Now, here's the truth. The U U.S. soccer agreed uh, to have a second First, First division. division. Right, right. The USL uh, Super League. USL Super League. Have you seen some of the photos from the yeah, turnout? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a clearly a strong demand for women's soccer outside of the markets that NWSL already has teams in, and in some cases also in those Wh which markets. Which is also a little weird that USL has teams in markets that NWSL teams already it's exist. It's a little wild. It's a little some strange. of the markets are pretty big, though. Some <laughs> yeah, of the yeah, markets which, are pretty but, big and could, could sustain that yeah. if marketed correctly. Um I think a, a second first division, another first division, opens up the door for a second strong division within this country. If it's smart, it's not two first divisions competing. A handshake is made and an agreement is made. One of you will become the second division and none of yourself probably yeah. will become the first division, but teams will fall and go up. And if the women's game is the first to do promotion and relegation, the massive advantage that they would have being the first ones to do it in American sports, in the American soccer landscape where so many people have been begging for it would be pretty huge. I think it would I think, I think it would open the doors for a lot of a lot of uh profit, a lot of financial I think gain. that see so I would be at this point and maybe the, the the pro rel truthers might not agree. Yeah, I think at this point, the the talent pool for a second division within men's soccer, yeah. I think is is much more viable. Right, but how how viable is that based on the uh, owners and thought yeah, leaders? Right, right. That's men's a whole soccer. other thing. But I'm just talking about the talent on the on the field. Right. When you look at the the lower table, like WSL has 12 teams. How many teams do they have? I think it's 12. It, it does. The, the, Europe, women's Super yeah, League, yeah, yeah, has like twelve teams, so they don't they don't even have really enough teams for a, I I think a, a strong a very strong first division from no, top, but that's from a top different to bottom. animal. The way the game was treated in Europe is very different than the I way agree. it's been I'm, treated I, in I'm America. I'm just saying that a the second, last like thirty years, I think a second division in women soccer. We already have it. Well, we don't. I guess, yes, sort of. We so okay. No, we already have Wait, it. And look at just pull up Tampa's roster. I know <laughs> it's filled with it's really standouts from NWSL. That's right. But it's still, the, the the I think the gap between the 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 quality at at Tampa versus Orlando is very very high. So I'm just my worry. Yeah, that's how first and second divisions go. I understand. Dude. I understand that. But I, I Plymouth I, Argyle versus <laughs> Manchester United is a very large. Uh, my my gap. Con my concern is that if if there is promotion and relegation and that that second division, I think the the talent pool is not strong enough for it to be a a league that people are really, really excited about. Because I think the quality drops off that a little too exists. much. I don't... Okay. I mean, well, I guess we'll see. If you're in NWSL... But what league are you talking about? Are you saying USL Super League is technically like the second division? It's a second, first division. Whether they're right, first right, division right, or not, right, right. they're paying less than NWSL. If you're a quality... Yes, yes. If you're an, uh, like a superstar quality player, you're probably still going to be in NWSL. If you're on the fringe and maybe even good enough to play or start, but you're not getting the most amount of minutes or you're not considered one of those superstars, you're probably going to go to USLW, uh, you, right? Yeah, USL, yeah. USL Super, Super League. League. USL Super, Super League. League. You're going to go to USL Super League. Yeah. Okay. But that's still that gap. That's what that gap is now. That gap exists right now. And we're seeing fans go okay. in droves to some it's, of these it's, it's been markets. One, it's been one week. Uh, one one week. weekend. <laughs> so I don't know. That's how why I said it was a hot take, not a little <laughs> warm take. So I'm not saying it's look, and I'm not saying that the USL Super League is bad or not uh not entertaining, but the gap is clearly there. So if it can, What do you think would be the repercussions for all of US soccer if the if the USL Super League and NWSL were to agree to promotion and relegation, if the women's leagues were the first to do it, what do you think the repercussions would be for the rest of US soccer? 
there, I don't even know if there would be repercussions. It would be, it would put pressure. If people would be like, it, it would have to be like two, three years of seeing it, seeing the success, seeing money bring uh, uh, brought in, seeing the attention, people being excited for those those end of uh, end of season relegation battles. Mm -hmm. Like, if that happens enough times, and they see that there is a a, a viable uh, uh, financial product, like the owners and stuff like that, then I think it puts a lot of pressure on uh, uh, on the rest of U.S. soccer to, to to take it a little bit more seriously, but. That it's all hypothetical until like I don't know who's sort of thinking about it. everybody's just thinking about sustaining their league and 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 surviving. So survival is way more important on the women's game because dude, they just got to this point where it's they're a, like really, really viable. Yeah. For so long it was like, will the league survive? Right. Now we're at the point where like, yo, this league is growing leaps and bounds. So maybe this is five, six years away. Okay. But before World Cup 2026, if they make that decision. I mean, and it, somehow it works. We can all hope. I mean, it might be, it would be cool. It would be huge. It would, would it not be huge. It would be huge. <laughs> it would be huge. It would be huge. Um, but look, again, WSL. You heard it here first, folks. Has, they have promotion and relegation. And when you, when you, I've seen the occasional Reading game, the Reading women's team. Yeah. We and went it, to a, we went to an Everton ladies versus a second division team. Yes. Uh, who, Durham. Durham. They play Durham. Uh, and, and, and again, not to say that it wasn't entertaining. I'm just saying that when you watch the teams, like really, I like the, I would argue that the, the teams at the bottom of the NWSL table are very much close in comparison to some of the teams at, in, uh, at the top or middle of the WSL table. That's what I'm saying. It's just like the quality to me is just so stark that I don't know how exciting a a legit second division because again you have the second division but the the the, the players if, if there's it no free two leagues of 10 teams I, they can I'm just saying that the 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 good players are going to get poached for those NWSL teams and and like I said I think be, if there's no uh, uh draft now you're going to have some super teams I just think but they, how do the players get poached for those teams because those no but how What's the process? If I'm, I'm a second division team, I've got a superstar on my team called Christina Polanco. Okay. <laughs> Who's fan of her? She's, She's great. scoring buckets, right? <laughs> you are the head of Gotham uh -huh. in the first division and you want her. You, How do you get you, Christina from me? You pay you pay the club and you offer her a great salary. Uh-huh. So you've now paid me the club. So now I've made money for developing I talent. Made, I, and yeah. now that player is making more money for being a good talent. What's the lose in this? This and is how, it win win. And how does that second division club replace Christina Polanco? With now developing more talent. So now you create academies on the women's side. Yes. And two, now I can pay a player who maybe is on that which, fringe in the first division to come down which, the same way Wrexham did. Which takes a little bit of time and the talent pool right now, I just don't think is high enough to have a viable. I think you're crazy. Second division to I think promote crazy. and relegate. There to. already exists. The look at the players that Tampa signed: Adami uh, Richardson, beyond good enough to play in the league. Yes. Uh, I look at um, uh, Taylor, who was on our show. Taylor Smith. Taylor Smith was at Taylor Brooklyn. Smith. Absolutely Kristen good Edmonds enough. From Gotham went to look. Eric uh, Timrak went to also went to Tampa. Another of player is a high a quality. I mean, what are we talking? But those about are here? NWSL players. Yes, of but course. But now they're on the USL. Uh, I know Super that League. those are NWSL players that made the decision to go to uh, the USL Super We're League. We're talking about players in the USL Super <laughs> League. That would be your second division. I'm just saying. Okay, well, we look. Give it. I'm just giving it time. I'm trying to see how this the Super League does. Uh, it, it, it is on. On paper, right now, it is not a second division. It is a first division. That is what they're uh, uh, sure. That, that's their designation. But well, come on, <laughs> but but the, sure, yes, come on. But the the idea of uh, promoting and rele and relegating with these with the new CBA, no free agency, teams are gonna uh, absolutely uh, 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 try to get uh, uh, you know stack these teams, be strong, try to compete in this league. I think this makes NWSL the most competitive league in the world, without a doubt. And that is true. And also the league of choice, probably for the but majority the, of the players. Look, it, it, pe people are going to lose. Uh, they're going to lose out, and and that's going to that's just going to be the teams that are on the bottom of the NWSL table. They're gonna mm -hmm. they're gonna struggle if they can't uh, uh, adapt and and recruit and convince players to 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 join their club. Yeah, and now so you can't coast anymore. It's going to be incredibly ruthless, ruthless. And now to have the idea of a second division that play, that teams can get relegated to, which is I'm not against the idea of the relegation. I'm just thinking about the the second division. Is the second division going to have a qua the quality that is at least close to 
uh, NWSL. That's my question. I am not. What second division has the quality? Or at least close. That's all. I mean, championship to Premier League doesn't really have that quality. Uh, La Liga to uh, the second league, La, La Segunda. Doesn't really have okay. that quality. I mean, this is the gap exists for a reason because nobody wants to play. They'd rather play in the first division right, than the right. second division. So that's it. I'm I'm not I'm not saying I think the when it comes to MLS and thinking of a second division uh, for MLS, I think there's literally enough players to make a second division be like a, a very entertaining product. I also think one thing we haven't talked about, but is a big part of it, is how many players slip through the cracks in a system right now where there aren't really academies and whatnot. We're not really developing players. Academies associated with the divisions. I, I, would say, I know that there's yeah, academies. I, I would say colleges are, are filling in that gap of really not developing anymore, bro. players. There's no draft. You I, don't well, even got to go to college no more, bro. <laughs> no, you got to go you to college. Have, well, now the academies uh, uh, and maybe, you know, the, the club soccer and all these other co- sort of uh, uh, organizations might have a stronger role because college also with the NIL stuff, like now it's also colleges are, are having a tough time recruiting players as well because now that maybe if you're a really good player, you may not, you know, how much am I getting paid by going to your school? Yeah. And that's also an- another consideration. How do so, I make money? Exactly. So, which is fair. So now they, the club it's got, good, look, it's a good conversation. I don't think I'm 100% right, but I believe I'm 100% right. Okay. Does that Love make it. sense? Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, <laughs> just, it's like talking to somebody about religion. You know? <laughs> I'm, sure, <laughs> well, I'm sure I'll get through to him I somehow. know what I know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> My God says yeah, yeah, promotion yeah, yeah. And relegation it's is a book, <laughs> dude. And yes, I wrote that book. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I just think this, I, the, for some reason, I think this lines up for them to be the first. All right. It'd be cool if they do it. Last thing. We'll, we'll end on something uh, fun and silly. The, the, the Champions League, uh, CBS uh, mm-hmm. has the rights. They, they cover it. You yeah. Know, yeah. Everything. You, you, got, you, got to do your, you got to do your work and homework and cover oh. it. We're all excited about it. Talk about so much of it. Champions League, the new format. Yeah. But, but you, we've seen people like walk into the theme song with weddings and stuff. Right, right. It's a big deal. Yeah. Iconic. Right, yeah. And now... Why would you make any changes? <laughs> right now... I would. They were like, yo, Timbaland, get on the remix. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wow. <laughs> There's a reference. There's a reference for everyone who uses the word skibbity. <laughs> no, so they um, they they updated the Champions League anthem. Mm. Uh, and we, oh, no, job. we all know it, right? Yeah. It's a we banger. We looked at the lyrics once like eight years ago on yeah, the show yeah, it's a, and made fun of it. It don't really it's, slap like that. Okay? No, nah, the uh, lyrics ain't hitting. <laughs> okay. When you learn the mother languages, you're like, yo, y'all not really saying nothing. <laughs> But they, there was an update, and we actually haven't uh, heard it. We don't know. Uh, we haven't. Bro, heard. your "What's Happening" tab is crazy. What's my "What's Happening" on the tab? right here? The, the, oh, this, the it, it was the DNC because of uh, we bro, got the Tigers is, at the Cubs. Yeah, we got Comrade Kamala. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Kamala Harris wants communism in America. It says <laughs> on your. This is. Oh wait, we can't say this because now YouTube's gonna block. This it. is news to me. Uh, I don't. Uh, who? I hope not. Uh, who knows? Anyway, oh. you you brought it up. Cut it out. We'll cut that. We'll out. cut that. Okay. Okay. Um. The all right. So Champions League anthem. Actually, we should probably blur that out too for YouTube. <laughs> uh, Champions League anthem. I we have not heard it. Let's uh, let's uh, let's listen to it and see if there's any. This is for real. This is. It's not gonna be like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are we gonna get rickrolled or something? No. Uh, this is. I saw Nico. Nico Cantore posted yeah. this. Your co-host that morning footy. Uh, so let's let's listen to it. See what, what if we can tell any difference. Okay. First of all, the 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 singers. The octave seems like a little bit higher. Yeah, and also, who invited the violinist to, to freak it a little bit there? <laughs> like, yo, they said, like, the this vi- did not need updating, man. The violinist was like, can you match my freak, yo. bro? <laughs> uh, okay, let's uh, just play this a little bit more. Right? It's like, it's almost like the, there's a, a more of a choir, like there's more people. That's the classic one right there. Yeah. I didn't know they were pretty sure we can't no, show this highlights. Going, <laughs> I don't want him there. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little more demure. Can some you, would say. Oh, <laughs> good callback. It's a little bit more lo- I think actually it should be a bit more demure is the problem. <laughs> it's a little bit more demure. It's a little bit more low-key. I think I would say the original is feels more operatic. It feels more yeah, this grandiose. Is a, like you could you you would hear this in a Star Wars film. You know, like yeah. a bigger 
op- a bigger magnum opus, as yeah, they yeah, say. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I went to a high school with a kid named Magnum Opus. <laughs> okay, we I don't, don't, I, we don't I, want to know why. But. <laughs> um, I I don't love it as much as I did the last one. Maybe I'll grow but to this you, one. You loved the last one? Yes. Really loved. Play the, uh, play the last one. It is one of the most classic. <laughs> it is like oh, nearly perfect. I mean, it's fine. It's fine. Really? Love is not a word I would use to describe. You know the exactly League what anthem. it was. Everybody's posting the damn the put old. Old Champions. I mean, it's just it's just a look, it's I, okay. I'll I'll be honest. The problem with the Champions League anthem to me, and anybody at CBS watching, apologies. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't want to this is not Alexis's opinion. Right. The thoughts you're about to hear are <laughs> that solely of Christian Blanco. <laughs> it is that I it's I hear it too much. It is, I'm watching a Champions League broadcast. Go out to commercial. Come back from commercial. Oh, you're the job. You're what the else job. are you going to play? I'm, just mix it up a little bit. The song, it, I, I I enjoy the song. It, nah, it, there's crazy. a time and it's place. Iconic. But every, for every commercial that, break. You, you get that once, maybe twice a week during the Champions League weeks. You got to hear it, man. The Champions League broadcast is, is like three, four hours, bro. The, nah, you, I, I hear, hear it. it too much. I want to hear it. As much Carter, as what do you think? Yeah, I, I think uh, it's got to play as much as you can. Yeah. <laughs> you only, yeah, you only, it's only, it's a specific thing. You only get to hear it. Think about it. Like, I've been to the Emirates a bunch. Getting a chance to hear the, the, that, that theme sure. in the Emirates was an iconic moment for me. All right. All nah, right. The old one was, there was a, there was a grandiosity. Okay. I may have made that word up. See so here, it's already. a little, it's a real already. Yeah, I mean, we could just play a couple seconds there, and you hear the the volume is a little yeah, higher. Yeah, so also they, like they're it hitting feels, the strings, like right. I'm a little bit of more aggression. Somebody evil is getting married to the most beautiful woman in the world, <laughs> and that's the song they would play as they walk in. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Uh, there's the, okay, so the new one has a little less. It's, it's less bass. It was like yeah, yeah. Like that's the, what I'm saying. They the, took the bass. The out The choir of it. is like they they were like they got a bunch of eunuchs. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that we need. It went to the first one. Sounds like it should be played when the sopranos walk in the room. The, this new one sounds like it was sung by actual sopranos. <laughs> you know so, what I'm saying? Totally, totally. So it's. Uh, I mean, I'm. I'm. You know, I'm not mad at it. I'm not. You know, I wasn't in love with the original. I I think it's it's. I Do you think th- you'll enjoy listening to this one multiple times through a broadcast? I, honestly, it's. A, I like that it's a little bit more toned down. A little bit. It's more my the first the old one's your personality. Yeah, yeah. Very the new one's so. my person. It's just like okay. You know what though? That actually is that's that, that's that on right there. I get that now. First one is big, it's loud. Right, right. This right. next one is a bit more subtle. Exactly. Just as good. <laughs> just just as a good. bit more subtle. Does it need? <laughs> does it need all of the wacky parts? So see, we started the show with the demure trend. We end with the there demure trend. Okay. It's a, the Champions League. You see how the Champions League is a little quieter. It's a little yeah. bit more demure. It's very mindful yeah. for the people that are watching right. and listening. Okay. Very appreciative of your time that you're sitting down to watch uh-huh. Champions League. So you're. Appreciate it. See, Champions League is not like those other competitions, okay? Right. That are trying to be in your face, trying to be loud, trying right. to be aggressive. Watch me, watch the. No, no, no. no New no, Champions no. League anthem is out here, okay? You want to make love while listening to Champions League anthem? This is a little bit better, you yeah, okay? Yeah. Your ladies can appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> it's respectful. <laughs> Look each other in the eye. <laughs> All right, let's. Uh, wrap. My favorite, my favorite demure based uh-huh. uh, meme was somebody posted. Uh, that this the demure trend ain't for you, girl. You from the Bronx? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's not, perfect. Is, is that you're not yeah. demure? You're dead ass. Yeah, you're dead ass. <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect. I love it. Uh, all right, we'll be back on Monday. Uh, no, uh, yes, we're back on Monday uh, uh, with a new episode. So we that's got, uh, right. Uh, yeah, the, uh, September. And I'm not going anywhere this weekend. I will be here. That's right. Back to schools starting soon. Oh, I hope boy. you got all your school you supplies. You actually got to worry about that soon. I mean, it's gonna be a couple years before. What, four? Not even three and a half. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, he's not in daycare. Maybe yet, the so. kid starts early. You gonna do that thing like my baby can read? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen that? <laughs> you gonna do that? Do that that thing, yeah. <laughs> you know Educating a child, yeah. No, no, no. They got babies to read. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, we're we're sort of getting there. He's um he's not reading, but he is uh you know the 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 chair that you got him? Yeah. So he we've been teaching him to like 
look at his name and like touch because it's um it's stitch so you can yeah. feel the letters. I'm, I'm like telling him to like I go look at Ma- this. I'm helping the education. Ma- I go yeah. Mateo and and t- t- each letter and sound out each letter and he's gotten up to he touches the letter he touches the M A he goes Ma. And I'm like, this kid is Doogie Howser. Yo, damn, bro. <laughs> this kid's a real surgeon. Yo, just <laughs> call Harvard now and say, you got a couple of years, but I suggest you prepare the largest You got to come see this kid. Yeah, I know. Look damn. what he's doing. MIT is on their way. <laughs> okay. There's a lot of competition. <laughs> I'm, we're not signing anything until no. you come and actually visit. NIL is going to be very important <laughs> on this kid. So it's, it's remarkable seeing a little baby learn all this That's stuff. Beautiful. Anyway, okay. Uh, we'll be back on Monday. Uh, new episode. Uh, we'll have a least cup champion. Uh, so we have a lot to discuss. Uh, and uh, maybe uh, Everton will maybe get a win. Who knows? Uh, Probably not. Against, against Tottenham. Hey, oh, then maybe you will. <laughs> Come on, Richardson. Be a, a deep sa- secret agent for Damn. Everton to help us win, please. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll be back next week, everybody. Have a good weekend. Peace. Love you guys.